Okay. <laughs> now I'm gonna sit down and try to do some work. Um, okay. There we go. A video that needs to go live. All right, so let's see what question is next. How do you get your kids to stay up so late? We just do. Um, it's it's really like I share our schedule and what it looks like, but there's nothing groundbreaking really about it. Um, we just let them stay up, and usually they do really well at night. Um, you can tell when. Okay, we're gonna have to start heading towards the exit when the whining gets closer and closer together, but most of the time we make it great. Um, but a lot of times the people will be like, oh, well, how do you like, don't they like wake up during the night or whatever? My kids will wake up sometimes during the night, even on their perfect schedule. So I don't, I don't quite blame it on that. Um, and then half the time when we've had rough nights at Disney, it's been also because Bella, like for her, was teething. Or when Lucy was younger, she was teething. So it was the teething. It wasn't the Disney that did it because even if we were home, she would have been waking up like that and was even leading up to the trip. So we just do. <laughs> um, best stroller in Disney for a 15 month old and to travel with on a plane. Um, I really like our Juvie Cooper. Um, they also have a single version. You don't have to get the double. Um, if you just have one kid, I really like that one. It's very sturdy. It's pretty lightweight. Um, the like storage basket underneath is good size. So like you have room for things. Um, yeah, I, I really like that one. So I will link it down below. Um, let's see, do they have any rides for a two-year-old? They have tons of rides for a two-year-old. Anything that has, um, that doesn't have a height requirement, your two-year-old can ride it um and then starting at i believe it's 32 inches and then they go up from there that with the height requirements so depending on how tall your two-year-old is there may be some other things that they could get on um i know bella is 20 so no she is she's 21 months today actually um so she is 21 months and just was able to ride um at her age ride Tomorrowland Speedway at Magic Kingdom and she also is now big enough for um, Aliens Whirling Saucers at um, Hollywood Studios. So there's a definitely a lot of rides but suffice it to say there's over 40 attractions at Disney World that anyone even a teeny tiny little baby can ride. So lots for a two-year-old. Let's see do you have a list of uh, rides kids under two can do? kind of answers that with anything um can adults split dishes at sit down dinners at disney are you charged a fee for that um okay so as long as it's not a buffet family style or um or it's not a um what is it like a prefix menu kind of deal um where you like pick an, an appetizer and then you pick an entree and then you pick like a dessert or whatever as long as it's not a prefix like that um if you're just like ordering a la carte on the menu um then it's just like any other restaurant you can totally do that we've even had table service restaurants where we just went in for dessert we didn't even order a meal um and so it just depends like even at narcoosies we ended up splitting and getting an extra side to go with our meal just because we were like between getting an appetizer and a meal and that's extra side like we're gonna be stuffed um and we were like we couldn't even finish one whole meal and the side um so it, it you can totally do that not charge the fee um so yeah it's definitely a great option you can have your kids split kids meals so there's no charge for splitting no questions but i can't wait for your vlogs yay i can't wait to start sharing them um i think when this video is up they'll already be starting to go live but yeah um tips for taking my one-year-old this summer her first time going to Walt disney world well that is exciting um definitely factor in especially since you're going into the summer some play time some out of the stroller like get the wiggles out time because that is going to be so critical because it's not fun to just as luxurious as it sounds to just be pushed around the park all day and only get out for rides after a while that gets tiring and tiring on your bottom so definitely factor in some out of the stroller time and then also i would definitely um make sure to have a stroller fan i will link my misting stroller fan that my girls love down below because it's a must for going most of the year at disney world like here in april we needed that cooling misting fan 
um, even then, and you're definitely gonna need it this summer. Were you a fan of the compression packing cubes or would you rather the regular? Yes, I actually loved the compression packing cubes. They were really, really nice. Um, it was nice to where I could use it like as a regular packing cube if I wanted to, but then if I wanted to compress it, then I could, and I loved having that option. So I definitely liked that. No more waffles right now. You've already had plenty. Right. Let me knock out a couple emails and then I'll get back to questions. All right, I got a couple of emails there, finished up. Um, do you bring toys for the pool, for the kids? What do you do for entertainment? Um, usually we'll bring like a couple of little toys. Um, a lot of times I'll get like maybe some little like diving toys or wands or something like that. Even though they're not big enough for like diving necessarily, they can play with those um, and they enjoy those. Um, and we'll, they'll also double a lot of times as bath toys back in the room so we can kind of serve multi-purposes instead of having to take a set of bath toys and a set of the um, pool toys and things like that. Or they do have the little, um, they have like a bucket at Disney they'll sell and I think it's around 20, $25 tops that it had, you can pick like the characters that are in it. Um, they've got like Finding Nemo characters and princesses or Moana or um, Toy Story and they're just little like, uh, silicone toys. They don't have the holes in the bottom though, so they're not like gonna get nasty and germy um, on the inside and like start growing things, which I really appreciate. Plus you have the bucket that you can use. Um, so sometimes we'll be like, okay, as part of their souvenir, we'll get that. Um, especially like Bella, she loves those little toys. They'll play with them in the bathtub here or outside of the tub. We'll play them outside in our water table for the summer. So it's kind of a fun little souvenir that it's something that they get to pick out while they're there and then play with and then bring home to play with as well. So that's kind of what we do for pool time and toys always hubs job how can y'all take off travel so often uh, not meant being just genuinely curious okay so he is in um he is a production manager for millwork so like doors trim things like that um so he does that we with our schedule this year we have like tapped out his days off um he gets about two weeks off per year right now with his job um, as paid time off. He can take more time off than that, but then it's not paid time off. It's just, well, you understand it's how it works with jobs um, or like nine to five jobs that have paid time off. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's how that works. And that's why sometimes I do like, I do a girl's trip or I'll do, um, I'll, I'll do a solo trip because he sadly can't come on every single trip. I mean, at some point, maybe, I mean, this will turn into something where he can travel full time with us and we can just do that as a family. Um, but right now it just, it doesn't pay enough for real life and fun times. So right now his job pays for real life and my job pays for fun times. So <laughs> that's kind of, that's our, our working relationship and our marriage there. Um, how did you manage flights if it overlaps with nap time and do your kids not don't nap and your kids don't nap on the go? Um, my kids do not nap on the go on travel days schedule goes out the window. Um, it just, it is what it is. And thankfully, because you're in such a different atmosphere and there's so many like things going on and such, it's just different. Um, it's usually like entertaining enough that they're fine. Um, but that's also why I have plenty of snacks. I have tablets, things like that. Screen time limits also go out the window on those days. Um, and so it's like, if you want to play with it, that's fine. You play with it. Um, I'm not like, only packing toys that they can play with um and like not not relying on screens we that's what we choose to do and it works for us um so we'll do that and it's just it is what it is we did do a couple of days on this trip where we had longer days and they really didn't nap and so we may get to the point where we don't have to go back for naps and they're fine i don't know um it works for us we try to do earlier morning flights or evening flights like coming back um and that that's just what works for us but we just we, you just do it you kind of have to do what you have to do when traveling i know it's scary especially for the first time but it just is what it is um let's see have you guys thought of moving closer to disney we have but that would also require um leaving family and all of our family is like within a like 30 minute to four hour drive and so to move further away from family um 
that that part would be hard if it if we weren't so close to their family if our family wasn't awesome and they like sucked or something <laughs> if we didn't have a good relationship with our family it would be one of those see you later or we're going to florida um but we love our family so we are for the foreseeable future here in tennessee what resort are you staying at we stayed at stayed at all-star movies this time um what's your favorite time of year to go i'm trying to avoid the heat and crowds okay so that's tough um if you're wanting to avoid heat and crowds i would say january february with the exception of run disney weekends avoid those at all cost let's see how old are our girls um, lucy is three and a half and bella is three months shy of being two years old can you share the link to the new toiletry travel cylinder you got? Oh yes, I will put that in the description box here. Um, some of my links didn't apparently save on my pack and prep with me. So I apologize for that. Favorite park for kids four and under besides Magic Kingdom. That's a tough one. We, okay, we really like Hollywood Studios just because you have all the Disney Junior stuff there. You've got so many shows. And then you've got like the Toy Story aspect. So we really like that. Um, we really like Hollywood Studios as our like other park. And I mean, it's kind of a toss up after that between Hollywood or between Animal Kingdom and Epcot as to what you prefer. Let's see, show us the cookies. <laughs> okay, I don't have any cookies left, um, but well, no, I take that back. I might have half a cookie left. I may show that later. I'll show the cookies later. Um, we have some. What modes of transportation are available from the airport to the resort? So you have bus transportation, which is like mirrors or sunshine flyer. And then you have private transportation, which is like a private car service. Um, and I will put a link down below to a couple of our favorites. And then um, you also can do like Uber taxi, stuff like that. But if you have kids with you and they need car seats, then either the bus transportation or private transportation are gonna be your best option. Do you have a link for your pink dress? Um, yes. I can link that. Have y'all drove to Disney? We did before kids and we just don't like driving. Um, it's just like, we may have to do it at some point. It may come to a point where flight prices and our budget just don't agree, but that's something I would rather spend more on flights and not splurge and do like a dessert party or like that's more of a priority for me is flying and having that quick mode of transportation versus like I would cut out a meal, like a table service meal, or even stay at a, pick a lesser expensive hotel, like if the budget didn't allow for it, um, then driving. So <laughs> that's just me personally. I know that's not everybody, but that's just me. Yes. Bracelets. Yeah. Do you like the parks better at night than during the day? Um, I think I actually do. Like there's a there's just this different vibe. Like you can't get as good of pictures at night. <laughs> but I like the ambiance of all the lights and the glow. It just the parks come alive at night. Um but my my favorite part is either early entry when there's like not hardly anybody there and it's just so empty and then late at night it's the same thing. There's not a lot of people there. It's not really crowded. And so those are my two favorite times. If I had to like just go in the morning and then go back and us take naps, that's why we enjoy our midday nap break is it gets you out of the heat, but then it also helps you be able to do those early mornings and late nights and it makes up for the shorter nights. Um, in some of the cases, hey, we don't kick sister. <laughs> She's saying, this is my mommy. This is my mommy. <laughs> All right, I'll answer some more questions in just a little bit. All right, since the girls are down for quiet time, I'm gonna set up my lights in here and try to film a couple of videos. I have my, the rest of my Stony Clover that I'm unboxing and all that. Then I'm gonna get back to more questions, but since I'm doing this kind of day in the lifestyle vlog with answering the questions, I wanted to share kind of our routine and kind of how I do what I do. So I'm gonna set this up and start filming. <laughs> broke last week that annual passes are coming back to Disney World. Yay! Fine. Price that out and see if it's worth it for you and your family. But I'm curious, are you going to get an annual pass when they are released on the 20th? Let me know in the comments. 
Okay, now I'm gonna film my Stony Clover haul. Filmed a quick little video for um, a like annual pass, is it worth it kind of video. So I'm gonna have that to edit and then now the Stony Clover haul. I'm gonna finish this video and then I'm hoping to be able to film my budget review, kind of recap. How much did we spend? How much did it cost? That whole thing, um, which I think is going up this weekend and this is Tuesday. So I need to get to filming that and editing. Um, but yeah, so that's how the day is going and I will get back to asking, answering your questions in just a minute, but I gotta film this video real quick. Okay, now that I have a few videos filmed, um, let's see, is she asleep? I think, oh my gosh, I think Lucy fell asleep. Wow, uh, that doesn't always happen anymore. So <laughs> it's kind of a surprise. Um, she must be tired and then Bella is sleeping. She always takes a she always naps. Um, okay, so I love being able to batch content like I've done today. Like I feel like super productive when I get to like film a few videos at once. Um, it's always so helpful. And especially when they're like shorter videos that makes it easier to batch a bunch of content. So if you're not familiar with batching, it's just where you film a bunch of stuff all at once. Um, and so that's, that's what I did today. So that was nice. All right, so I've got my questions pulled up. I have my Gideon's cookie. I am so excited about this. Um, this is my favorite way to eat a Gideon's cookie now. This is the chocolate chip or a chunk of the chocolate chip, like you can tell. It's a pretty thick cookie. It's, it's delicious. It even has like sea salt on it. So it's yummy. And then this is their icing. I usually get their peanut butter. They didn't have peanut butter icing that day but they have these little containers of icing. It's a little like, I think four ounce container. Yeah, four ounces of their icing like they put on their cakes, which are also delicious if you've not tried their cakes. Um, their peanut butter chocolate one. Oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> so, so good. But this is their cookie butter icing. And I, this is like a match made in absolute heaven. Um, and I just dip my cookie in the icing. I know it's not healthy. I know it's not good for me, but do I enjoy it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it. So here we are. It's just so good, you guys. Okay, one more bite, and then I promise I'll get back to answering questions. All right, let's do this. What do you do in long lines with tiny? Nervous my one-year-old will get upset being held. So I let my girls down. If they can walk or they can stand, let them walk, let them stand. Some of the cues are actually interactive, which is really cool. Or we'll just count things or point at things. Or at that age, I would even have like a little toy, a small toy or something. And I will do these like cheap little Dollar Tree toys or Target Dollar Spot, something simple and small that they've not seen that I can pull out and be, then be able to play with in line. So anything that's like really tiny that can just pop down in my little mommy bag or fanny pack that I keep with me. That really helps to keep them entertained. Um, we'll take pictures on our phones. We'll do like all kinds of things. Um, I just try to let them walk and get some wiggles out too if they are to that phase. Um, even if it is like holding onto their fingers or whatever the case is. So that really helps to just kind of keep them occupied. And for us, if you're really worried about long lines, I would definitely invest in Genie Plus for certain parks. Now for every park, you don't have to have it, but specifically Magic Kingdom. If you cannot get it at any other park, buy it at Magic Kingdom. And that will help so much with the long lines. It'll shut it'll cut your line and wait time from potentially 60 plus minutes down to about 15 or 20. And then if it's less than that, it's usually a walk on for lightning lanes and for Genie Plus. So just something to keep in mind. All right, next question is, do you pay for Genie Plus for three and under? No, you do not. If they do not need a park ticket, then they don't need Genie Plus. Um, so under three, they don't need either one of those. Um, what's your favorite character meal for three and almost two year old? Um, I think I mentioned that earlier. Where did you stay? Did you like bringing the side-by-side -side stroller this time or prefer the other? Um, we stayed at all-star movies and I do prefer my side-by-side. -side. It's just, it's one piece. It's all together. It's less heavy than a double stroll, like a inline double stroller. So for that, it works. If you're staying at a Skyliner resort though, this is the one caveat I will always say. If you're staying in a Skyliner, Bring your inline if you have an inline that will be your best friend because you can push it onto the skyliner where you can't the side by side so that's the big deal like 
between those two. Um, any recommended stroller sunshade? I'm bringing a small umbrella stroller. Um, there's a few on Amazon that are like shade, like sunshade extenders for your stroller. Um, so I will link a couple of those down below that I've looked at and seem, they seem like they're really nice. If we, our stroller like needed a larger sunshade, those are the ones I would buy. So I will link those below. Um, how many baby shoes do I need? Uh, of a son and doesn't walk yet but learning um i would just maybe bring a pair of like regular shoes or like with bella i would always use the little like moccasins they're not the freshly picked but they kind of look like freshly picked um i have some little mickey mouse ones that i got from h&m and i would use those and then maybe some like little swim shoes or water shoes or um like some native kind of croc like shoes um just so that they would have something for like when they're like practicing walking um but yeah i wouldn't take i wouldn't take maybe more than that or even just let the water shoes be like play double duty itinerary of rides for 11 month old in magic kingdom will usually start at buzz um yeah, Buzz is a great, like, starting and, like, working your way around. We love Buzz, too, so that's one of the places we will go. And then my girls love People Mover. <laughs> I don't know if it's because they've ridden it so much because I love it or what, but they always ask to go to People Mover. So we go to People Mover. Um, obviously, there's Dumbo. You can do Dumbo, which is a classic. We love Winnie the Pooh, and so kind of just working that direction. Um, we'll do the Carousel, A Little Mermaid, and just kind of all of those. Um, but as far as like an itinerary or order, we just usually kind of go and hop around of whatever um, I can get soonest, like with a Genie Plus reservation or whatever has the like shortest line. So that's typically how we do it for not using Genie Plus. I would do Buzz Lightyear. And then for us, I would personally run over and do Winnie the Pooh right after that and knock out those two because they tend to have like the longer weights versus the carousel usually doesn't have like a crazy long wait. Ariel, not so much either. And Dumbo usually doesn't. And if you do have to wait very long, it's usually like you can wait in the play area, which is really nice. Um, so we'll do that. Let's see. Um, I'm staying at Bay Lake Tower, not a theme park view. Baby usually sleeps by 7.30. Any tips to see fireworks? Um, just go for it. I mean, you're really close. And I mean, worst comes to worst, like worst case scenario. And your little guy just like starts falling apart. And it's just a blubbering mess. <laughs> you can walk like you don't even have to get on any transportation whatsoever. You have a really easy out, you could just walk back. But you don't know until you try, he may love it. And he may just like ace it or fall asleep in the stroller and then you just transfer him so that's an option um later in the evening though at being that age especially staying out later i would definitely take like their pajamas and like change them into pajamas and let them like wear those and then when you get back you can just put them in their sleep sack or whatever however they sleep in their bed um my girls use a sleep sack so just put them in that and then put them in the crib and you're good to go um but that's kind of how i would do it all things staying up late with baby. Okay, yeah. Everybody wants to know about those late nights. We're just crazy. I'm sorry. We we try things. Where was the breakfast pizza from? Okay, so that was from Trattoria Al Forno over at Boardwalk Resort. Um, I had put off eating there for the longest time because I wanted the characters to come back because previously before the world exploded and 2020 happened, um, you could meet Rapunzel and Flynn Rider and Ariel and Prince Eric there. And I'm like, I want them to come back. And then I was like, okay, fine. I'm going and I'm trying this breakfast pizza and that's what we're doing. So I went and we tried it. It was delicious. I loved it. Any Disney cruise plans in the future? I'm perusing. I'm perusing the website, you guys. Okay. It's it's a lot. It's overwhelming. It's like a new thing to even be looking at that or Disneyland or anything else. Cause I'm so like, I'm so comfortable with plating Disney world trips. And so this is like uncharted territory. So we'll see what I decide to jump into, or if I revert to my, <laughs> if I revert to my comfort zone of Disney world, um, after hours, extra parties worth it or not, nah, were you able to use genie plus all day, especially big rides? Okay. The after hours, the extra parties, I think they're worth it. I just, there's, they're so different. You get experiences during those times that you just don't get during the day, like for the Christmas party or even the Halloween party, you just get extra special things, um, and extra special experiences. So I would say they're worth it. Um, the after hours, 
you can do a lot in that time frame. Um, everything doesn't just immediately turn to walk-ons. Um, I th and I think that was part of my expectation. I had watched um, one of Mammoth Club's vlogs where they did the party at Hollywood Studios and that's where we did our after hours party. And the night they went, it was just like instantly, everything was a five minute wait with the exception of like Rise of the Resistance. And it was like 20 minutes or something, but everything else, even like Slinky Dog was like 20 minutes and it was like everything so short, but it didn't happen like that for our power our party the night that we were there for our after hours event. It took quite a few hours into the party. It was until like probably the last hour, hour and a half that lines got to that point. So I think my expectation was it's going to be like their party night was and it just it wasn't. It absolutely was not. Um, it was amazing and we had a lot of fun but it wasn't just walking on to everything. Um, but it was so much fun. It was really nice to experience much lower crowds, even though the wait times were still moderately high um, for Hollywood Studios and everything. It was, they were still, it was a good night and I would do it again. Um, the nice part with the after hours is you do get unlimited soda and bottled water and Mickey ice creams and other ice cream novelties and then free popcorn. And so you get all of that with it too. So you could just spend the night snacking and walking around and riding rides. So it's, it's a lot of fun. And as far as you using Genie Plus all day, we didn't buy it the night of our after hours party. Um, and those like Genie Plus goes away at park close. So you can't utilize it during the Christmas party, Halloween party, or the after hours events at any of the parks. When park close, Genie is gone. Tips for under one, uh, pack your patients, pack your baby carrier because you're gonna want that. Um, that was one of the things I had wished I had packed this trip was our baby like carrier. I just I was like, oh, we don't need that. And it really actually would have come in handy a few different times. Um, like with Bella wanting to be like cuddly and held, she's my cuddly kid. Um, so I wish I would have taken that. And your stroller fan. So just your patience, your stroller fan, and a baby carrier and you'll have a good time. How do your little ladies do the next day with park nights? Do you always try to rope drop? Um, we enjoy rope drop, but you'll see in the vlogs from this trip, we didn't rope drop like after staying up until like, I think it was 2 a.m. almost before we got back and in bed um, for our after hours party, we didn't rope drop Magic Kingdom the next day. Um, there's kind of a, a point where it's like, okay, we just, we've, we can't do that. Um, if we are back and in bed around midnight, then we might rope drop. But if it's like getting close to like two or later, no, we, we will sleep in. I will use Genie Plus and we'll like stack some lightning lanes for that evening or the afternoon and we'll kind of adjust our day accordingly. Um, but yeah, we don't rope drop every single morning, especially after a late night. Let's see, pop or movies for a short three night, two park day trip. Um, I mean, pop's gonna give you the more transportation options, but movies has better kids theming. Now the insides of the rooms, I think look exactly the same. So basing it on the room, you're getting the same thing. But over at pop, you do have the option of taking the Skyliner, which is really, really nice. But you do have like the Toy Story section and Fantasia McGee and even my girls love the love bug section. That was the section that we were back in that we were about over in the Herbie section and they like that. So it does have a little bit better like kid friendly theming. But I mean, either one to me is a great is a great option. But if you're going to Epcot or Hollywood Studios as one of your park days, I would probably pick pop. Let's see. Most recommended rides for two year old and four year old. Um, okay. So honestly, whatever they're into, um, and this, I hate to sound like so wishy-washy, but it's one of those, whatever your kids into, because for like my kids, we would do people mover and Winnie the Pooh and they would want to go ride Dumbo. And then like Lucy would probably want to do Barnstormer. And those are kind of like our like, go-to favorites. Um, but your kid may be way more into Ariel and then that would be something you would rather do. Or they may be a more like princessy and want to do the carousel. So um, just peruse the app of rides and see what your kid would be like, what aligns with their interest the most. And I would pick those as your attractions. Um, cause 
there's so many kid-friendly attractions at Disney World and even ones that you don't think are like our girls are fine on Haunted Mansion they love pirates like pirates of the Caribbean I would have never guessed that my kids would have loved that but they will literally ask to go ride pirates um so yeah you like I've known some people that they're like I rule out all dark rides like we don't do um we don't do Peter Pan we don't even do small world we don't do anything that is dark we don't do Ariel and it's like but you don't know like you until you go and you try you don't know if your kid's gonna love it or hate it so I am I'm like a mad scientist I'm like we're just gonna give this a shot and see how it goes because it can go horrible but then it can also go great so <laughs> we're just gonna try <laughs> we're just we're reckless how did your shoelaces light up in Magic Kingdom okay I will put a link to our light up shoelaces we get so many questions about those and like the little like battery packs that are on them everybody's like what are those like I will put a link to them below. Um, Akira, any recommendations for first time mama going on her baby's second birthday? Um, oh, well, that will be a very fun second birthday. Um, just pack your patience. Don't try to overdo it. Just relax and pick how, like if you're a family of three or family of four everybody pick a favorite maybe let the birthday girl pick two um or something like that and meet one of her favorite characters but just take it easy relax there's so much to see and do it just gets so overwhelming to like you want to do it all and you want to quote unquote get your money's worth out of it but if you have a magical day you're getting your money's worth out of it it's not based on riding all 36 rides in a park or something to get your money's worth so well, that's fun and makes a nice challenge with kids that's that's not really fun not at this phase yet so maybe it one day magic band um is it worth it nowadays um i mean for me i would say yes and we kind of talked about this earlier but um the only i would buy a magic band plus if you even remotely think you're going to be going anywhere else um i'm sorry there's like <laughs> They're working on our deck. So if you hear hammering, I'm so sorry. Um, it's, it, it, we're dealing with it. Um, but I think they're worth it. If you're going to do a Disney cruise, do Disneyland, then it just kind of follows you everywhere. Um, and also the nice part about getting kind of the latest and greatest is that it's going to probably last you the longest as far as, as far as longevity. So I, I think it's worth it. And I enjoy the magic bands but I know some people really like using their cards or other things, so there's that too. How do you manage a toddler at Magic Kingdom? We're going in September and I'm terrified. Pack your patience, mama. You just pack your patience. It's gonna, ha it's gonna be fine. Your toddler's probably going to have a meltdown. And so just come to peace with that and come to terms with that. It's gonna happen. But you, I promise you, will not be the only one with a kid that potentially gets overstimulated. Just make sure that their basic needs are met and this is so easy to forget when you're in the moment and you're like, well, we got a Genie Plus and then we have to hurry and we get to our lunch reservation and then we need to get to the bus and we got to head back for snack or we got to head back for nap time and we need to do this and we need to do that. And like, it gets so frantic that sometimes you forget the basic things like we need to slow down and take a water break. They need a snack. They need to get out of the sun. Let's stop, step into a gift shop or into a quick service restaurant and like a little out of the way place let them cool off because a lot of times they're getting overheated they're overtired overstimulated and it's just it's a nice culmination of everything and you're also probably a lot of those things too we talk about it being like just our toddlers well we get hot we get overstimulated we get hangry I'm not pointing any fingers but your girl gets hangry um and so it's one of those it happens to the best of us. It happens to all of us. Um, so just slow down, make sure that those basic needs are met, the potty breaks, the diaper changes, the water, keep them hydrated. Um, if you're going and it's warm, which in September it most likely will, stop by the Casey Jr. Splash and Soak if it is going. My girls loved that this trip and being able to run around in the water. It just, it was a nice way to cool off. And even as an adult, we kind of got a little bit of a mist and I'm like, I'm in heaven because <laughs> it felt so good because it was hot, you guys. I don't know what I expected for April in Orlando, Florida, but it was definitely hotter than I expected. But you're going to do fine. Pack your patience, your stroller fan, and um, make sure that you have, like, snacks and things that you know your kid will like. Order groceries. You're going to be fine. 
How do you get your baby to stay up late and not cry all night long in her crib? I kind of talked about that earlier. It's, we just do and they usually are so tired. They're just like Disney tired. They are gone. Now there will be times when they will wake up and like cry a little bit, but then they'll go like right back to sleep. Um, on this trip, Bella, she would like wake up and why like cry for like a minute. And then she'd just be looking for her pacifier and we'd give her her pat back and then she'd go right back to sleep. So a lot of times that was, it was very easily consolable. Do you have any advice about how to take pictures with Minnie? Um, she is at all four parks. Um, some places she's with Mickey, some places she's by herself. Um, but for me, even just like getting the girls comfortable with meeting the characters, I tried to, if you've been, show them pictures of you hugging the characters or you taking a picture with the characters or like shameless plug, show them our vlogs and my girls. Cause I've had so many comment and be like, my kids knew exactly what to do when they saw characters because they've watched your girls like run up and hug them so much. Or they were like such pros for this experience or this attraction. And I was nervous about it, but they were like, oh, we watched so-and-so. And so like, I think that's so fun. And that's why I like including the girls because I know it helps other kids too, being able to see the vlogs and see them do things. So it's a little less scary when they go for the first time. So that's kind of what we would do. It just, you, you should be able to meet Minnie and hopefully fingers crossed it goes well for you. Um, love your videos. Will you guys be doing Disneyland park anytime soon? Maybe. Um, hello, taking my daughter um, when you're eight months and totally crazy for Minnie. I hope you can get to meet Minnie. So yes, that she's in all four parks. Um, just look in the My Disney Experience app. You can look for characters um, and be able to see where they are in each of the four parks. So do a little perusing in the Disney app. Um, just to kind of get an idea of where she might be on your days and you can you can definitely meet Minnie um, or you can even do character meals and so she is at Cape May she's at Topolino's Terrace she's also at Chef Mickey's I feel like she's somewhere else she's not at Tusker House I do know that much I feel like she's somewhere else I don't know it's escaping me uh, if you know where else she is that I didn't list leave a comment let me know because I'm like <laughs> totally blanking. I feel like she's somewhere else. What do you do with your diaper bag when you go on rides and into the bathroom? Um, okay, so our diaper bag hangs on our stroller all day long. I have a mommy bag or a fanny pack, whatever you want to call it, that I wear and it has my wallet. Any valuables go into that bag. My camera stays in that bag, all that kind of stuff. Um, and usually I'll just grab some wipes and a diaper or I'll have a little like setup that I take in with me. Um, if you've not seen my stroller diaper bag setup, I answer all of those questions and everything I keep in there and how I do all of that. I will have that video linked um, down below so you can check that out. How many days in a row can your girls take uh, before you take a pool day? Okay, so for our family, if we take appropriate breaks, and we do our naps and everything, we don't have to have a pool day. Do we enjoy a pool day? Yes, but is it like a necessity or my kids like not gonna enjoy the rest of the vacation kind of thing? No, um, it's not for us. Um, it is more relaxing to have that pool day in between and even for like us as parents, it's nice, but if our trip doesn't allow for that, it's not gonna be a make or break situation if that makes any sense now obviously doing like two park days and then a pool day and then two more park days or like three and then one off and then two more park days i mean that's an ideal situation but sometimes your trip just isn't long enough to include that so just something to kind of no. Are you loving the Daisy fanny pack? It's so cute. I'm on the fence. Yes, I love my Daisy fanny pack. Again, I will link it below because I love it so much. Um, okay. Oh, this battery is blinking. I've been recording for almost 30 minutes, you guys. Okay. Um, how was Tron? Amazing. Too short, but amazing. Grocery delivery recommendations, Walmart Plus. Um, and then let's see. Any plans for Universal or other parks in conjunction with a Disney trip? Not at the moment but maybe someday. Um, how do you balance redoing old faves versus trying new? Um, it just, it's, it depends. Sometimes we're like, we're going to do nothing but new and we end up doing like 75% new and 25% old. Um, it's, it's hard cause you want to go back and like balance your favorites. And so that's kind of like our, 
our thing is we try to like do like half and half of like, okay, we're going to do 50% new things, 50% old things. Um, and so it's kind of getting a little bit harder as to do like new things and new restaurants. Um, cause we're starting to like have eaten the quite a few of them, but, um, which is crazy to say, but it's um, one of those perks of the job, but we just try to find a little bit of a balance between um, taking our five month old soonest best tips for a small, uh, smooth day, take lots of breaks, get them out of the heat, um, let them try to see if you can find a place to let them get some wiggles out, whether it's in a play area or taking them into the baby care center or something just to like let them move around. Um, take a blanket to the hub grass and let them just like do some tummy time and just play around. Um, I'm, I promise you, you will, you will probably enjoy tummy time on the hub grass and just watching them and having fun with them right there and just hearing the music and seeing the castle. That'll probably be your favorite memory. Like, honestly that like i'm telling you it's the simplest things that will make your day um how much do you involve lucy in the planning now that she's bigger so i will talk to her about certain things a lot of times like i'll dean and i will make this decision about like where we're staying and how long and all that kind of stuff the, like logistics but then like when it comes to rides or we'll talk about like restaurants like i started telling her about how we were going to the toy story restaurant about two months before we went and she was just like obsessed and constantly talking about how she was gonna have a forky cupcake so that's all i heard about for two months so <laughs> she loves being a part though okay i'm just gonna keep going until this battery dies <laughs> um any plans for other disney vacays we're looking at it. We'll see. We're, we'll see. Um, does the owner bo owner's locker box travel? No, it is Disney world only. Um, so that's the only place you can use that. I wish it would move. It can move around, but it doesn't. Um, how do you get a good view for parades? Um, I just try to like, look as we're like going through main street is like pick out a spot of like, okay, where, where do we think would be a great spot? I know like, okay, let's go back to that area when we're ready to watch a parade. Double stroller recommendation. I will link mine down below. I absolutely love it. It's my like favorite double stroller, um, especially for the parks. Best month to go to Disney World, Disney, December, January, or February. I would personally say beginning of December. I'm a Christmas person, so I love Christmas. Um, but if you don't care about Christmas, like end of January, mid to end of January, um, are, is also really great too. Stuck on what to do about traveling without a car seat to and from Disneyland airport. Okay. So I don't have options for Disneyland airport transportation yet. Um, but I am looking into that cause I keep getting a lot of questions about it. Um, number one tip for going to Disney with a one and a half year old pack your patience. I know I keep saying that, but for you, for them, for everybody involved, just pack your patience. It will make the day go so much smoother if you will just slow down and relax. It's overwhelming and you want to do it all, but just relax and have them some, let them have time to lead. Like let them pick something or let them feel like they're in charge of the day just a little bit. It just helps their little self-esteem, but it also helps their little mood to feel like, yeah, I, I did this. I, I picked. And then they get to like, reap the rewards of their choices. So it's fun. That, is, that would be my advice. Vista stroller travel friendly. I'm debating because it's so big, but I know she'll be comfy in that one. Um, I really enjoy our Vista. We took that for Lucy for the longest time, but it, it works out really, really well for us. Um, if you want to, there is obviously the travel bag, but we've used it with and without and not had any issues like gate checking our stroller that way. Um, but yeah, it, if you want them to be like super comfortable, take the Vista. You will see lots of them. I'm, I wouldn't be worried about like theft of your stroller or anything like that. Um, you can always put like an air tag or something in it, but there are tons and tons of really expensive strollers at Disney World and even I'm sure at Disneyland. Um, so it's, it'll be fine. Can you explain how Genie Plus works? <laughs> not in this video. There is not enough time, but I will link my Genie Plus video down below for you to check out. Um, all right, you guys. Well, the camera just died, so now I'm on my phone. Um, I'm gonna call that. I like. I I still have multiple questions left, but I I just can't get to all of them. Um, and I'm sure this video is probably gonna be about an hour long already. But if you enjoyed it and you enjoyed the long form, 
give it a thumbs up um leave me a clock emoji down in the comment section and that way i can know you enjoyed the long video um and if you are new and you enjoy tips tricks and hacks for taking toddlers little kids to disney then click the red subscribe button and i will see you in my next one and since i got so many requests for these two like topics specifically i will link my genie plus video here for you to go over and watch and then over here i will link my toddler schedule and kind of our routine at disney world what i do when they nap like the whole thing so i will link those two videos so if you had a question about that you can check out one of those Yes, I'm eating more cookie. Don't judge me. <laughs>